In today's episode, we will explore an advanced color grading technique using a really powerful and unique tool in Capture One to manipulate colors in a very sophisticated and effective way without the need for Photoshop. Hi everyone, what's going on? Welcome to my channel. I'm Andrea Oliveri and I use my over 10 years of experience as a professional travel and skate photographer to teach people photography through workshops and online courses, helping them unleash their uniqueness and create the photos that best represent their vision. A couple of weeks ago, I was uh, invited to the Fujifilm X Summit and Fujikina 2023 in Stockholm for the launch of the new GFX 100 Mark II. It was a fantastic event and I had the opportunity to chat with a lot of photographers and creators, uh, put my hands on this new amazing camera and tried it out in the city. Fujifilm just created the most refined and modern film digital medium format camera that I ever used and the quality you can get out of this camera is really astonishing. I also had the privilege of taking the stage to discuss landscape photography, sharing insights into my approach uh, to photo editing and demonstrating how I use advanced color tools in Capture One. Of course, because of the tight time schedule of the event, uh, I didn't have enough time to go super in depth, uh, so I thought it would have been a great idea to record a short video to show you a quick but comprehensive editing tutorial on how I use one of the most powerful and advanced color tools in Capture One. So let's jump into Capture One and here we have a handheld shot of an urban scene of Stockholm. For this shot I used the brand new GF 30mm f3.5 fixed lens, an amazing super sharp lens. Our main goal for this edit is to enhance the color separation of these buildings and the different elements in the picture. So let's apply some basic adjustments uh, like uh, increasing the exposure, the contrast, uh, maybe a little bit of saturation. I'm going to recover some of the detail, the highlights. Uh, let's increase a tiny bit the shadows, so it's the blacks. Uh, and uh, maybe let's straighten up the vertical lines here with the auto button here on the keystone panel. Great. With the launch of the GFX 100 Mark II, Fujifilm introduced uh, a new film simulation called Riala Ace. Riala Ace! With a tonality similar to Provia, but with a bit less uh, saturation. So let me show you. Here is the traditional Fujifilm Provia film simulation, and here is the Riala Ace. Provia and the Riala Ace. From what I can tell, the luminance of some colors is slightly higher on the new film simulation. So let's start by applying it and right off the bat we already improved our foundation. Okay, one of the top features that makes Capture One quite unique, I would say, is how it allows you to manage colors. And one thing that really stands out in this regard, in my opinion, is the color editor. The color editor is a dedicated model where you can really dive deep and manipulate colors. You have uh, the basic area where you can tweak the hue, the saturation, uh, lightness uh, of a fixed range of colors, like many other raw developers. Actually, it's not completely fixed. For example, let me grab the color picker here and click over here, like that. You can see we are now targeting the orange uh, color. If you click over this three dots button, it will open up this window where you can see and change the color range of each color preset. We can see what elements of the picture are selected by this specific slice of color wheel. In this case, all three buildings are affected by the selection. But if we select another slice, you can notice there are some tonalities missing and that's why we need a more sophisticated approach. So my suggestion is to leave this panel at the default settings and use the advanced tab instead. Okay, the advanced tab is where a lot of the magic happens. This tool is absolutely brilliant. Let's start with something very basic. So let's say we want to start by editing this building on the left here. I usually start by creating a brand new a field layer with a left click and hold and select add new field adjustment layer. Now I'm going to grab my color picker and then click over this reddish color tonality I want to edit. And then straight away Capture One gives you a suggested color range. The central dot is the exact color that I selected, whereas this solid line is the range of 
color that's going to be adjusted. And this fuzzy colorful slice relates to the first slider, which is uh, called smoothness. So this controls the roll off of color into its nearest neighbors. So if that's a really hard cut off, you can lead to something like posterization and you don't have a nice smooth roll off. Let me show you a quick example. I'm gonna create a brand new field layer and I'm gonna add a new selection point uh, right here. So just for the sake of the demonstration, I'm gonna increase the lightness uh, quite a lot to make uh, the adjustment more evident. Uh, and uh, I'm gonna reduce the color range like that. And then I'm gonna decrease the smoothness. Look at that. As you can see, we are creating a lot of artifacts because of the hard cuts off. Okay, so this is something you really don't want it to happen. Great, let's remove this one and go back to our previous uh, selection. Okay, once you pick up that color selection, it's very hard to distinguish uh, the selected color range uh, without turning this uh, checkbox, which is uh, view selected color range. So as soon as I turn that on, everything goes to black and white, uh, which is not part of my selection. In this way, we can visualize just the selected colors uh, in the color wheel and the range around it and mask out uh, everything else. Now, it's much easier to make uh, refinements uh, to our selection. To select only the building on the left, we need to manipulate uh, the selected color range. So we need to adjust uh, this area. To do that, it's super simple. You can use the handles uh, like that or directly the slice. So let me tweak the, the slice. So I'm gonna reduce the Moving these uh, side uh, handles, uh, we reduce the hue range. Towards the center, we have the less saturated colors, and towards the, the outside, we have uh, the more saturated colors. So if we drag this line towards the center, we are filtering out uh, the more saturated uh, areas uh, of the image. One of the tricks that I use to get a better idea of what I'm doing is increasing a bit more the saturation so it's much more evident what I'm doing. And then from here, I'm gonna tweak the selection in a much better way. So I'm gonna bring uh, the slice uh, completely towards the reddish tonalities. So now we have a very precise. Look at here, we have some artifacts here. So let's see, see if it's something related to the, yeah. So it's uh, related to the more saturated color. So if I filter out uh, too much, uh, I'm gonna create uh, some weird artifacts. So I have to make sure to keep the selection cleanest as possible. Okay, here we are. So let's uh, bring back the saturation to the default level. And then from here, I'm gonna start increasing the saturation to my liking. Maybe I'm gonna decrease the lightness here, like that. Increase saturation a little bit more, increase the lightness. Uh, I can also change the hue like that, more towards this, uh, the reds uh, like, that it's too dark saturation a little bit more okay so let's check the just the before and after the adjustments great now we want to uh, tweak this building here so i'm gonna create another new field layer like that let's rename for a second so i'm gonna grab the, our color picker Let's click over here. Let's turn on the view select color range so we can see what we are actually selecting. And uh, like before, we are selecting too much. So we want to restrict the selection just to this building. And to do that, we what we want to do is to tweak the, the handles like that. I'm gonna increase the saturation to have a better idea what I'm doing. And uh, let's zoom in we are still selecting some part of the central building. And uh, I think we can 
filter it out, uh, the, removing some of the less saturated uh, tonalities like that and maybe also the more saturated tonality like that. Let's zoom out, turn off this one and then uh, we can go back to increasing the saturation. Let's maybe increase in this case maybe a lighter, a brighter color is much better to me like that. A uh, hue more towards the the orange, not too much, like that, a little bit more brighter. Mm. Yeah, not bad. Okay, this is the before, this is the after. As you can see, we are adjusting not only this building, but we are also adjusting a, a building uh, behind here, this one, and also this one on the left. So if we want to restrict the area of the, of the adjustment, so we can mask out uh, some part of the, of the picture. And uh, it's pretty easy. If we click uh, the keyboard shortcut M, we are actually applying the, this adjustment to the entire images. So if we select uh, with the shortcut key E, so we are selecting the eraser tool, we can mask out uh, all the part of the image that we don't want it to affect. It's a quick and dirty. M to hide the mask and then let's have a look. This is the before and this is the after. Great, another powerful feature of this uh, color editor is uh, that it allows us to create uh, masks based on the color selection. Why it's so powerful, why it's so important? For example, have a look here. We have uh, a few adjustments like the hue, saturation, lightness, but what if we want to adjust uh, maybe the contrast or the clarity of uh, this building over this one or whatever other part of the images we, we need? So we can't do directly from this panel. We need to create a, a mask based on this selection. So if we move over here, over these uh, three dots, we have a create masked layer from selection function. So I'm going to click. Capture one takes a few seconds to process the selection. If I click M to reveal the mask, this is, a, this is basically our selection based on the color selection we made before. But it's a, a completely independent new layer. From here we can apply whatever adjustments we need. For example, we can increase, uh, as we said before, the clarity. Okay. Um, we can uh, tweak, uh, for example, the levels uh, to increase the contrast even more, like that. If you turn on uh, the mask here, we can see we are applying the same kind of adjustments uh, to different part of the image that we don't want to. So, like before, the eraser tool, super simple, brush out these areas uh, and uh, we are good to go, like that. Turn the mask off, here we are, so this is before and this is the after. Okay, let's do the last adjustments uh, just to go over uh, again to the color editor and uh, let's see, now we want to tweak this building, the central building. And so I'm gonna create a new field adjustment layer. I'm gonna grab the color picker. I'm gonna select this one, turn on the view, select the color range. As you can see now, we can tweak again. Of course, this one is less saturated of the other colors and uh, you can move, uh, you can restrict the area like that and then we Okay, here we are. And then from here we can reduce the saturation level. So we can filter in out uh, the right building like that. So this is a very, very narrow selection, but we targeting just what we want, just the central building. And it's so powerful. Let's turn off this. I'm gonna decrease the saturation. 
like that and uh, increase the likeness like that um, the hue more towards the maybe the greenish side like that so this is the before the adjustment and this is the after so we did a great uh, job and now of course this is just a, um, a demonstration probably now going back to the previous adjustments uh, we might want to decrease the saturation of the red one to keep the colors uh, more uh, natural of course of this one is too probably too saturated but um, you you have uh, now an idea of uh, how you can tweak colors and how powerful is uh, the color editor tool to really make a, a huge difference in the how to control and uh, create a better color separation on, on every shot uh, and uh, with a very detailed and sophisticated uh, level of uh, precision. The Color Editor is hands down my favorite tool in Capture One and uh, what I find absolutely fantastic is the ability to make these adjustments uh, right at raw stage without the need uh, to switch to a pixel editor like Photoshop. As always, if you enjoy this video and it's the kind of things you like watching, nice to have you around, Remember to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. And see you in the next video. Ciao.